What's going on everyone? Jordan here with Scale Science and tonight in the lab we're working on the MC1 rental car. Now I know what you're thinking. You guys are insane. We've seen it and heard it a few times already. But you know what? There was a moment when this project just made sense and it was actually when we were down in Arizona sliding that tandem RC. This car in your hand was just incredible. It had so much on throttle grip. I have never experienced something like that from any of my RC cars that I have. And it was really in these moments that I personally decided that I needed one. And thinking on that on the way home, I realized I couldn't be the only one that would be persuaded to buy one simply by driving it. At this point, I want to give a massive shout out to Manji for building this chassis out. He had a lot more experience being that he has one and he was able to complete the build with some extra parts for me so we could get this going. So thank you, brother. Appreciate you. We also saw this MC1 as a perfect opportunity to utilize one of our all new OMG drift packages, which includes a servo, gyro, ESC, and motor. With that motor securely mounted, it was time for the servo. These OMG Predators sport some impressive specs for the price. The one thing that I was concerned on was the weight but we'll see what this thing weighs out when we're done. The OMGs are also impressive, coming in at a price point exactly matched with the Rev-D RS-ST servo at $64.99, and they are fully programmable with a USB tuning port. With our servo buttoned up, it was time to address the wheels. I decided to go with these old school Yokomo meshies. They look pretty sick. Ever since Las Vegas, I've been hooked on Yokomo DRC tires. They seem to perform really well on a multitude of surfaces. Lastly, this is an old body that I painted and no one ever really wanted to pick it up, so it's been sitting on my shelf collecting dust. At this point, I ran out of parts, so I had to wait a few days, but booyah, mail call. Our spur gear and pinion gear are here. Time to get the rest of this soldering buttoned up. Now if you're unfamiliar with Rev-D, check out this spur gear design. Their holder has four pins that actually hold the spur in place rather than using stainless or steel screws, which helps you keep the weight down. At every possible turn, Rev-D is trying to shave and cut as much weight out of their cars as humanly possible, which is really cool. Not really something I've chased before in my RC drift career, so I look forward to applying some of this thinking to some of my other chassis. Now 
Now when it came time to install the ESC, I was faced with a form or function. I really like this carbon fiber ESC mount, however when I did try to install the wiring into my mounts on my ESC, it was just the wrong angle, I wasn't going to be able to tidy up my solder joints, it was just not going to fit great. I also realized that my fan and duct were going to run into my carbon body brace mount here and that just wasn't going to work. So I opted to move it to the lower deck with a 3D printed mount. Anymore it feels like I've spent about half of my natural life soldering. I'm always soldering. So as you can see, just make yourself comfortable, watch some movies. A set of helping hands goes a really long way with soldering, as does a good iron that can produce plenty of heat. Sorry my camera won't focus great on that, but one of the biggest things uh, I learned when soldering that was like a tip for me was a good solder joint will stay shiny. If it's a bad or cold joint, it will go dull. So if you look on your solders, if you have a nice shiny solder, that's a good sign that you had penetration and that your solder is adhered and conducting electricity well. Here's another soldering tip. Take it from someone who's messed it up plenty of times. I lay all my wires out in order of how I'm going to solder them on. That way I can just grab from the left to the right and complete my job. Here you can see one of my soldering jigs in action. It holds the wire. I lay it into the socket. I'm going to apply heat with the iron and I'm going to touch my solder into the iron just to get it flowing. And then that flow will cause the rest of the solder to also flow and tin the socket. Don't forget to make sure it's shiny. Well now, your swordplay, I must say, is extremely impressive. Why, thank you. Another trick I have is I'll pre-measure something on a piece of tape, and that way when I'm cutting, I can make all of them the same size, and that uniformity just adds a really nice level of cleanliness to your final product. Wee, I love it when a plan comes together. This thing is fitting just how I want it and is looking great. So some technical difficulties filming the soldering of the motor, but basically I start at the bottom and I'll work my way to the top. And what tidy wiring job is complete without a set of Ya yeah Racing angled bullet connectors? Someone from the old school.
Now we can talk of some other benefits of our lower ESC mounting. We were able to stick our capacitor onto the side of the ESC, kind of tuck it out of the way, keep the wiring tight and clean. If you didn't notice already, wiring is one of my pet peeves and I hate bird nests. Same thing for the switch. Cut a nice tight piece of tape and I stuck it below the ESC onto the diffuser. Gives you nice access to turn the car on and off, even without removing the body. All in all, a nice, clean, tidy package. Our last piece of OMG equipment to be installed is this V3 gyro. I love these little aluminum cases. They look really nice. And I think it's a great bonus that they keep their wires separate from the case. That way, if you ever have a problem, you can replace it without having to replace the whole gyro. That's a great touch. Would have really came in handy on Project Phoenix. Massive kudos to RevD right here for actually cutting the channel out for the signal wire that will run to the rear ESC mount. So nice not having to fish a wire all the way through the top and just butcher that really nice wiring job we did. So here it is guys, the final product. All of our OMG goodies are in. This MC1 is close to hitting the track. We still need to install the front bumper, some front body posts, rear body posts, and a new receiver for our Futaba 3PV. One last tip I struggled with myself when I started was with bullets, uh, plugging them in backwards or reversing your polarity. So uh, I started cutting one of the wires shorter than the other to where the one wire could not get to the other side of the battery in reverse polarity. If you have any soldering or setup tips that you'd like to share with everyone, please drop them in the comments below. Oh, 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 oh